Hey everyone, if you're watching this part of my live, welcome to the replay. Just waiting a couple of minutes for people to join, but I will ramble so that you don't scroll right past this. So, hello. Just uh, popping on live here. I'm going to kind of do a Q&A, kind of wing it. Maybe I'll talk a bit about smear campaigns. Um, welcome everyone. Hello. I see people are joining. How exciting. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. If you are here live, let me know in the chat where you are from. And if you have any questions, um, just thought I'd pop on live because it's been a while and uh, I keep saying I'm going to do this more often. So here I am doing it more often. Hey, and I'm good. How are you? Welcome. And uh, yeah, I mean, while we wait for people to join, I'll briefly introduce myself. So if you're new, hi, my name's Adriana. I am a narcissistic abuse recovery coach. I've been through it myself, lived experience, all the things, and chronic pain is what uh, what led me to becoming a coach, believe it or not. Um, so I had really bad chronic pain from 2015 to 19, carpal tunnel, TMJ dysfunction, migraines, all the things, it was a shit show. I'm sure I've got like a bunch of posts, like my first pin post, you'll, you'll hear my whole story or read it. And uh, basically, I knew I was raised by a narcissist and um, I didn't think it was trauma. And then I learned about something called the mind-body connection that if you have physical chronic pain, it's not about the original injury. It's actually about um, repressed emotions from childhood trauma. So I was skeptical, but I did the work because I had the gift of desperation and sure enough, healed from my pain within four months and also from like the lifetime of abuse that I went through. So um, yeah so then i was like i need to tell people about the mind body connection so i actually started off as a pain coach and then the more i started sharing my story about being raised by a narcissistic mother and all that here we are and uh that is part of what i do with uh, my clients because pretty much everyone who's been through narcissistic abuse has some form of like chronic pain or mystery symptoms and all that kind of stuff and uh we do the inner work and we kill two birds with one stone so welcome welcome everybody so excited to have you here i know i randomly came here live i'm gonna start scheduling these at some point but you know sometimes it's just one of those things where it's like i'm just gonna randomly randomly do it when i decide to do it between calls um and i hope you're well and happy too awesome we've got catwalk from colorado nana shirley from arkansas hey p 1024 hi nat Catwalk out the cat's paw. I'm so confused. I had to cut off my whole family. It's really sad. And I just had to put my 14 year old cat to sleep this morning. I am so sorry. Oh my goodness. Pet grief is like next level. I, I'm not even going to get into it because um, I'm going to start crying. But uh, I am so sorry you're going through this. And you know, in, in conjunction with having to cut off your whole family, that is so hard. Um, Something I will say, which might sound controversial, but we're in this space, so it shouldn't be too controversial, I guess. If they start reaching out, if they're aware of, you know, having to say goodbye to your cat, they might start reaching out because now you're vulnerable, right? And so try to keep that in mind because you cut them off for a reason and now they might be using this situation to you know, try and hook you back into the cycle of abuse because you're in a vulnerable situation. So I just wanted to throw that warning out there for you and anybody else who might be going through a tough time right now. Like if the narcissist becomes aware of something terrible that you're going through, expect, expect them to reach out and like pretend to have concern. And that's love bombing because you're already in such an emotional state by what you're going through. So if they love bomb you, you might start thinking, oh, they do care. And then that opens up the doors of communication and then the cycle of abuse is just going to continue over and over and over again. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, Yolanda, I love my narcissist mom and it's hard to date because she sabotages or even calls the people I'm dating asking where I'll be, etc. What can I do? Please help. Don't tell her. <laughs> do not tell her anything about who you're dating. Um, stop giving her information. You have to go on like a massive information diet with her. And, you know, I get that you love her, but she is literally trying to sabotage your life, right? That's not love. 
that is abuse, that is bullshit, that's manipulation. And the reason she's doing it is because when you start dating somebody, you're giving them attention. Therefore, you're giving them the supply that she feels entitled to. So she's doing what she can to like scare them off so that she gets you all to herself. So do not give her information because it's not going to go well. Um, Nat, thanks to you, I have been able to know how to deal with my husband's ex-wife. Amazing. I'm so glad to hear. Robert, newish here. Well, welcome. Glad to have you here. Catwalk, you're very welcome. Catwalk, that confuses me so much. Yeah, narcissists are confusing and they confuse you on purpose because people who are confused are easier to control. So you have to keep that in mind. If you ever feel confused, you're probably being manipulated. It's not that you're misunderstanding or you're stupid or misinterpreting things. No, no. This person's probably purposely confusing you because then you're gonna be in an easier to control state. Um, catwalk, they do that. The last time I saw my parents, I had a yelling meltdown and they just sat there calmly like they reverse discarded me. Yeah, it's that's the thing too, right? Like they, when you were having your meltdown, they were feeding off of that supply and they were like, you know, enjoying it by sitting there calmly. And it's like super fucked up because a normal person with empathy would like empathize with you, try to support you, comfort you, all that kind of stuff. Whereas a narcissist, they just, they get off on seeing you in an emotionally distressed state. And that's absolutely not normal. Um, so keep that in mind as to like why you have gone no contact and cut these people out of your life because it's just not worth having people like that in your life and the more time that you kind of spend dealing with people like that the more you delay finding the right people who do deserve you in their lives um yolanda what do we do when the narcissist starts yelling when they don't get their way so nothing <laughs> nothing let them yell let them have a temper tantrum don't respond because if you try the thing is they're trying to intimidate you with fear when they're yelling at you and fear guilt shame and fear i tell my clients all the time they're the three musketeers if you're in one of those three emotional states you're easier to control so if they can unleash their wrath onto you and make you feel like you have to do something about the fact that they're angry and yelling at you, then they get supply from you and they get to control you that way. So the more you kind of like ignore their little temper tantrum, the better, like they're an adult, they need to figure out how the fuck to self-soothe at this point and that's not your job to teach them how to do that. Um, they, they're doing it to get supply from you, to get a reaction from you. They want you to like join the yelling match with them because they, they love it like it's just it does not make any sense so i hope that helps um catwalk they triggered it by bringing up sensitive topics and caught me off guard we were literally playing a board game exactly right like that's what they do sensitive topics your traumas your vulnerabilities things like that like they will absolutely bring that stuff up in order to get a reaction from you and that's all they're after that's what narcissistic supply is that's your emotional reaction your time your energy your engagement you being in a bamboozled emotional state that's literally what they want from you it's fucked up doesn't make any sense robert is there any way i can talk to you about a girl that i was talking to and ended up going into the va for psychosis for a few days because of the manipulation i literally got driven crazy i am so sorry you went through that um check the link in my bio for ways to work with me i don't offer like mental health support but i offer coaching through you know healing from narcissistic abuse so um just disclaimer disclaimer um but yeah i do one-on-one -on -one sessions um there's also an option for wizio if you're on a budget it's 25 dollars. you can get a video response from me within a couple of days i'm usually pretty quick with them anyways and um there's also just throwing this out there for anybody who is interested my bulletproof group coaching program is back um it's coming back in june but i have opened up the doors for people to apply now the sooner you apply the uh, more of a discount you get and the more bonuses and great stuff you get as well so you can also go to the link in my bio for that you can also drop the word apply in my dms and the link to apply will be sent uh, automatically to you Shamoli, my partner's colleague texted them like I would check on them appointment and stuff and now I can't trust him and he doesn't feel he did anything wrong while verbally abusing me for having death. Let me reread that. My partner's colleague 
texted them like I would. Checking. So your partner, okay. So your partner's colleague did this why? Um, would be my first question. Um, but yeah, if he's a narcissist, of course, he's not going to feel like he did anything wrong, right? Like they don't take any accountability. So yeah, he was verbally abusing you for having doubts. You know, if it was a normal person, you were having doubts for some reason, like it would just be like a normal conversation. They would say whatever they needed, like they, they would prove it to you that like you don't need to have these doubts. But when there's a narcissist involved and they have something to hide, they're going to get angry, defensive and justify everything. And, you know, telling you that, you know, you're the problem because you're untrust, untrusting of me and all that kind of stuff when they've literally given you a reason not to trust them. So I hope that makes sense. Robert, yes, ma'am, I understand. I appreciate it. I will get with you. Awesome. I look forward to working with you, Robert. Uh, Yolanda, do you have a book about narcissistic abuse? I have an ebook um, called I Was Raised by a Narcissist. What the fuck do I do? It is a four-week self-coaching guidebook that you can use for four weeks. You can use it for longer than four weeks. Um, and it literally walks you through, you know, the kind of beginning stages of healing from being raised by a narcissist. So if you're interested in that, it is at the link in my bio. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Shamoli, thank you. You are very welcome. I'm caught up with, uh, oh my God, what's the word? Comments. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how to talk. Awesome. Um, Oh, yay, we've got another one. And I would like to thank you for all your videos. They helped me so much. Amazing. I'm so glad to hear. You're very welcome. I will keep doing this. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, I've been through it myself and made it to the other side and I will never stop talking about this. So I'm really glad to hear it helps. I appreciate the kind words. Awesome. If anyone else has any questions, please feel free to go for it. I think uh, I see something in the question box. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Scott, Sky, you're welcome, Anne. Sky discovered at age 54 that my narcissist parent who raised me was a form of trauma. I do have a good therapist. Any other suggestions? Hi, <laughs> I'm a coach. I literally do this. You know, a lot of people do my programs and therapy at the same time and like unreal, unreal results. Um, so if you are interested in taking things a step further, apply for Bulletproof because it is freaking awesome. Like it is my favorite program that I've ever created and uh, it literally takes you all the way through the whole uh, healing journey. So if you are interested, head over to the link in my bio my program's amazing, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and uh, once you apply, you'll be able to book a no obligation um, consultation call with me and uh, we'll talk about your application, what your goals are, um, and if I think Bulletproof can help you and um, we'll take it from there. Oh, let's see what else we've got. Grace, I'm dealing with a narcissist boyfriend. How do you let go and get out? So you know, it's easier said than done because you're probably trauma bonded, right? So it starts with awareness that he's a narcissist and, you know, being aware of his manipulation tactics and make like a list of all the reasons you want to leave and get out, right? And if you are able to, you know, have a safe exit plan, do it as soon as possible. Like don't even wait till you feel okay for it because the abuse is just going to get worse and worse and worse. And then just trust that like you can deal with the emotional stuff after, but get yourself safe first and foremost. Like that is like number one most important thing. And um, yeah, and then just start the healing journey. So, you know, one day at a time, baby steps and just understand that the sooner you start focusing on your healing journey, the sooner you're going to be able to find the right person in the future, right? But you wanna definitely take some time to like be single, focus on yourself, focus on your healing, and the right people will start revealing themselves in your life. Catwalk, making it to the other side is a good way to put it. I'm a 59 year old woman, yeah, 
totally. And you know, I've worked with people in their 60s, even in their 70s. It is never, ever, ever too late to start that healing journey and it is so worth it. Um, I have an amazing client, Nadir, and on um, Wednesday this week, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, um, uh, my podcast episode, that's going to be, uh, God, words, words. <laughs> I'm releasing a podcast episode interviewing her. She's in her 60s and she's, you know, she just shares all about her healing journey. So keep an eye out on that. Um, I will share the link in my stories uh, tomorrow morning once it is up. And um, she's just proof that it's literally never, ever too late to start your healing journey. The way I see it is like, as long as you're alive, you are still in this lifetime, you are here. You figured it out in this lifetime and you started doing that inner work, right? That is so worth it because so many people make it to their deathbed and they still are blaming themselves. They still think they're the problem. They have no idea that like it was even narcissistic abuse. So power to you for figuring it out. It's freaking amazing. Um, Yolanda, what was the hardest thing you had to overcome with your narc mom, guilt, shame, or fear? I have all three, unfortunately. I had all three too. Um, I think, honestly, it was like the guilt was the worst for me. Like I just felt like I was such a terrible person, um, but allowing myself to feel the guilt instead of believing the guilt and believing that the guilt meant that I was guilty rather than viewing it as like, no, I just feel guilty, but just because I feel guilty doesn't mean I am guilty of like committing some sort of a heinous crime. Um, and obviously journaling and doing the inner work and all the things and you know, <laughs> I can't go into all of it in a live, but uh, if you are interested in like really diving deep into that healing journey, check out the link in my bio for options. And um, you know, just understanding that no emotional state is ever permanent like emotions do pass it's just you have to learn how to get them to pass because the more we push them down the more we're repressing then we end up with chronic pain or like physical manifestations of the emotions because it becomes like a pressure cooker in your body and those emotions have nowhere to go um shamoli i like all the narcissistic abuse awareness that i have come across from your platform thank you i'm so glad to hear catwalk oops i mean 50 years old but a young 50 no worries regardless never ever too late rising out of the ashes i love your sense of humor girl i grew up with a narcissistic parent i struggle with cptsd now as an adult because of it do you have cptsd as well just wondering oh absolutely like not diagnosed obviously but you know it we all have cptsd like Narcissistic abuse is, you know, there's PTSD, which is like post-traumatic stress disorder. It's like one event happened that caused it. CPTSD is like death by a thousand cuts. It's like a bunch of little micro traumas over your lifetime that, you know, or several years. And yeah, like we're all gonna have those symptoms of CPTSD, like including being a people pleaser, hypervigilance, um, you know, anxiety, all that kind of stuff. It is all part of it. And like, absolutely, absolutely, I have it more managed now of course because like now I have the tools I know what I'm doing all the things but you know getting to that point is it's a lot of work but it's worth it rising out of the ashes I did not know about your podcast need to start listening awesome yeah it's uh, I'm not too consistent with it I'm trying to be but like you know between clients and my programs and <laughs> posting content and trying to make the algorithm happy and all that um it's kind of hard to keep up with all the things but the podcast is there there's like 50 something episodes um over the past oops over the past four years so you can totally binge listen to it now and more episodes are starting to come out in the next uh coming weeks catwalk i have a narcissistic mother father brother and sister-in-law smear campaign yeah i just made a post about smear campaigns today i hope it's uh hope it's helpful it's like you know inevitable that there's going to be a smear campaign like there and the thing is the smear campaign like they're they were already talking shit about you before you even knew there was a smear campaign it's just now that you know you go no contact or you start setting boundaries or sticking up for yourself it's uh they make it known to you that it's actually happening but it was already happening uh robert lol i've had a hard time with being misunderstood through text messages when i can't make a phone call i was wondering if that's something common among empaths or anyone with unresolved trauma so <laughs> You're not, 
the narcissist is purposely misunderstanding you right it's not that like the way you communicate there's something wrong with it like you're pretty clear with communication here from you know the the little that I know of you it's just that narcissists will tell you that like you're the issue and like they don't understand what you're saying because you're not giving them enough supply so they want to do that to frustrate you make you think that something's wrong with you you're the one who needs to do like all this work on yourself to be a better communicator and all that kind of stuff and then it distracts you from the real issue which is their abuse to begin with so Yes, this is absolutely common among empaths and people with unresolved trauma and survivors of narcissistic abuse, but the problem is not that you have a problem with communicating. The problem is that this person is intentionally misunderstanding you because they want to continue repeating that cycle of abuse with you. Uh, catwalked, it took a lot of work, lots of psychology books. Yep, absolutely rising out of the ashes oh yes you said it i don't remember what i said when you wrote that but thank you <laughs> catwalk i hated my reactive abuse to irene it's like my mind just got taken over yeah and they literally provoke you into reactive abuse so like it's i don't even like calling it reactive abuse because it's like at what point do you lose your shit you know what i mean with all of the insanity that this person's putting you through and so you know really healing will help you to understand that like you had every right to be angry in that moment and they trigger reactive abuse within you so they can point the finger at you and say like oh look how angry you are something's wrong with you you're unhinged this and that but it's like no 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 like there's all this lead up that built up towards that reaction but of course they need to make you the bad guy um robert that's an awesome metaphor death by a thousand cuts yeah totally Alice, how do you deal with a mom that refuses to acknowledge all the trauma she caused you as a child? All I've asked my mom for is an apology and she just acts like I'm making everything up. So classic narcissistic mother behavior. So, you know, you have to accept that she's never going to take accountability. Like it's just never going to happen. And you can move forward and heal without her accountability, without her acknowledging all the trauma that she's caused you as a child. Like if you wait for that, you're never gonna heal, right? You're gonna be waiting forever. Um, they literally, like, my narcissistic mother died four years ago. She took all of her bullshit with her to her grave. Like, she literally gave me the death glare on her deathbed when she was actively dying. Um, and so <laughs> there's proof right there if that helps that, like, they don't change. They don't take accountability. They don't care. They just wanna get supply from you. And what's frustrating about, you know, for you, Alice, which I'm sure a lot of people relate to as well, is that you know when you ask a narcissist for an apology, they just act like you're making everything up. That is done on purpose to piss you off so that you know you might end up engaging in what we just talked about, reactive abuse, and you know get pissed off and say like, what's wrong with you? Like, why can't you just take accountability, da, da, da. And then they get to point the finger back at you and say like, oh, well, you're just ungrateful, this, that, and the other. And it's just like, it's never, there, there's never going to be any form of accountability or ownership for what they did, but you can take that power back into your own hands and not require it because it's not required and just focus on yourself and your healing journey instead of trying to make the impossible happen. Um, catwalk. Yep. Yeah, purposely misunderstanding me. My brother does that. Yep. Typical narc behavior. Yeri Chu, they either want to be the savior or the victim. Exactly, exactly. Rising out of the ashes, how old was your mother when she died? She was 76. Yeah, so kind of young because like my grandparents died in like their 80s. So I thought, I thought I had a lot more to endure, but she had a heart attack. So yeah. <laughs> um, any other questions? I can't believe I'm at the end of the questions already. Um, Feel free, otherwise I will end this soon. I am gonna probably end this in the next 15 minutes or so, but sooner if no one has anything else. Um, but hey, take advantage of the advice here while I am here live. And in the meantime, I'll ramble a bit about um, my program if anybody is interested. Um, my Bulletproof group coaching program is coming back in June and um, early bird doors are open. 
All you have to do is submit an application, book a consultation call with me. We'll just determine if it's a great fit, get you signed up if it is. If not, I'll let you know what else might be a better fit for you because um, Bulletproof is not for everyone. But uh, if you are you know, ready to do the inner work and ready to get all the support that you could ever imagine and ready to invest in yourself and your healing journey and really take this inner work seriously, I do invite you to apply for Bulletproof. Just go to the link in my bio, you'll see it, or drop the word apply in um, my DMs and uh, you'll get that application form link as well. Uh, Lori, is it possible to hear to heal from 50 years of PTSD? Absolutely, absolutely, a million percent. And I don't know if you were here earlier when I was saying about how tomorrow I have a podcast episode dropping, um, which is an interview with myself and one of my amazing clients, Nadir, and she healed from 60 plus years of PTSD from her narcissistic mother. And so it's she's proof that it is literally never too late to start your healing journey. And, you know, there's absolutely hope for you. Yolanda, I was raped by my ex years ago. I'm so sorry. And he denied it. I never reported it. What should I do? Um, I mean, I can't give you like legal advice, but you know, I I would always say like expose the motherfucker, you know, um, but if it's safe for you, go for it. Um, in the meantime, journal about it, do the inner work, let yourself, you know, heal from it so you can make a clearer decision on what you want to do. Um, so, Surai? Sure. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering that. In your opinion, which one is worse, narc mother or covert narc wife? I mean, any narcissist is bad, right? Like, I do think that having a narcissistic mother could possibly be worse because it's like you're being conditioned from in the womb. Um, and it's like a big mind fuck to come out of. But, you know, if you're married to a narcissist, that's a huge mind fuck too, right? So it's, it's bad all around. Like, there's no, there's, <laughs> When we're talking about the lesser of two evils, like it's still fucking terrible. Robert, thank you so much for your advice and your compliment about my communication skills. You're welcome. Kids, baseball game in a bit. I'll definitely follow up with you through the link in your bio. Thanks. You're very welcome. I look forward to working with you, Robert. Uh, Mrs. Diana, how to push yourself out of post-narcissistic abuse lethargic state? So the healing work, the inner work, my bulletproof program <laughs> will absolutely help. Um, and you know, you have to understand that the lethargic state is like fight, flight, or freeze, right? So it's like a freeze response, like your body's protecting you, your nervous system's protecting you. And this is like a huge component of the work that I do in my bulletproof program with my clients. So if you are interested in really taking a massive step forward, um, it's only offered twice per year. So now is, uh, now is your chat, your, Now's your chance unless you want to wait till the winter for doors to open again. Uh, Anjali, still living with my covert narc father. It's heavy to endure how much gray rock works. It feels tiring sometimes. Yeah, so this is why it's, again, the inner emotional work is so, so important because it's going to help you gray rock better because when you start gray rocking, the narcissist notices, like they notice that you're not giving them the supply they feel entitled to. So they're going to get worse. They're going to try any other tactic they can that they think is going to work in order to get an emotional reaction from you. And um, it is exhausting. It is absolutely exhausting. But the more that you're aware of their tactics and the more that you're aware of your own emotions and your emotional reactions, the easier it is to not give them supply. Because what's the alternative to gray rocking, right? Things continuing the way they've been going, that is more exhausting than, you know, using this tool. Um, oh, I'm at the end. <laughs> All right, well. If no one has anything else, we will uh, wrap this up. Oh, Inge, Inge, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Um, covert narcissist sister, how to open my mothership eyes to this as she is still protecting her. Okay, so I think you mean how do you open your mother's eyes to your covert narcissist sister um, and your mom's still protecting her. So I mean, Honestly, sometimes you just, you have to let people figure it out for themselves. Like you can plant seeds, but you can't force somebody to see something that they're just like not willing to see, right? So, you know, eventually maybe she'll see it, but at this point, like focus on you and your healing journey and not being part of that dynamic. 
rising out of the ashes. My ex was also a narcissist. It's more easy to get into those relationships when you come from a family with so many. Have you also been in a narcissistic relationship as well or have an ex that is one? Oh my God, yeah, like all my exes are narcissists. <laughs> um, and the reason that I, here's story time. Um, the way I actually found out that my mother was a narcissist is uh, after literally a breakup with the final narcissist I ever dated over 10 years ago, <laughs> I'm aging myself. Um, I, it was a very short lived relationship. Um, and then that's kind of what prompted me to start Googling the behavior. And then I realized, oh my gosh, okay, this guy's a narcissist. And then I started realizing like, oh, my ex is a narcissist. And the one before that is also a narcissist. And holy shit, my mother's a narcissist too. Cause I really dove down that uh, rabbit hole. So yes, I have been through all types of narcissistic relationships and it's a shit show and i agree that like when you're raised by a narcissist um you're more susceptible to dating them and getting into relationships with them friendships workplaces etc because that's all you know you have no reference for what normal is you don't know and like then you get swept off your feet with the love bombing and you think it's genuine because you don't know what the red flags are and um yeah it's a complete shit show. So yeah, um, I think the majority of us who were raised by narcs have probably also dated them. Uh, Angie, haha, <laughs> yes, spell check, no worries. I figured it out at least. Um, Anjali, thank you for being there. You're welcome. Catwalk, it is like solving a huge mystery. Yep, totally. Rising out of the ashes, yes, relation shit, totally. <laughs> Um, Mrs. Diana, thanks a lot. We'll check the program out. Are there even non-narcissistic men? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, check the program out, submit your application, book your call. We'll chat about it further and, you know, discuss other options if the program's not the right fit for you. Um, and yes, there are non-narcissistic men. They're like, any gender can be a narcissist. There's narcissistic women, there's narcissistic men, there's, you know, anybody can be a narcissist. Um, it's just that when we're, you know, in a pattern where we are used to narcissistic men, um, it seems like they're all narcissists, but the reality is no, there's, there's normal men out there, I promise you. I, um, you know, once I learned that I was dating narcissists, I broke the cycle and I found my now husband who is normal, um, not a narcissist at all. Um, so you can break the cycle. They are out there. It's just that, you know, the thing with healthy relationships is that they're not like they're, they're boring compared to a narcissistic relationship because in the love bombing phase, like the narcissist is like making all this excitement and you know, stuff and whatever. And um, that's kind of what we get swept up in and we kind of like disregard like the, the normal boring guys. Um, Cause you know, we're not being love bombed. So healing really, like if you were to do the Bulletproof program, honestly, like you will see the red flags so much faster and avoid future relationships like this. And um, you know, really be able to heal from what you've been through and be able to move forward and find the right person. And, you know, a lot of the times just taking that time for yourself to focus on yourself and your healing journey, like let yourself stay single for a while, like give yourself six months to a year, like minimum. And, um, you know, that's going to really help you start valuing yourself and, you know, not tolerating bullshit from people and being able to break that cycle. So... Diana, that gives me hope. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. I'm so glad to hear. That's awesome. Amazing. All right. Well, I guess, I guess I'll wrap it up here. If no one has anything else, I do have to run in five minutes. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Um, if uh, you haven't taken my quiz yet, I would strongly encourage doing that because it is super helpful. There's like a bunch of resources. I should have charged for the resources, but they're in the, they're in the results. Just head over to the link in my bio to take the quiz, or if you're watching the replay, drop the word quiz in the comments and um, the link will be sent to your DMs. And um, just final reminder for this live, I mean, I'm gonna keep talking about it. Um, my Bulletproof group coaching program is back. It is a small group coaching program, eight people or less in a group, and um, the next round will be starting in June, and I only offer this program twice per year. So if you are really ready to invest in yourself and your healing journey and take you know, you're healing to the next level and basically become bulletproof after narcissistic abuse and you're going to show up for yourself. You're going to show up to the calls. You're going to, you know, watch the modules, do the workbooks, 
do the things, take advantage of the support that is like an abundance of support that you will get throughout the 12 weeks, I invite you to submit an application. Just head over to the link in my bio and um, you'll see it there or you can DM me the word apply and you'll get the link to apply. And once you put your application through, you'll be able to book a no obligation consultation call with me where we'll talk about your application, what you're going through, what I can help you with, if Bulletproof is the right fit for you, you'll get all the information and um, you'll be able to decide if you wanna join, if it's a great fit. If it's not, I will tell you because, you know, I'm not doing this program just to get as many people in it because that, that sucks, it has to be the right fit. Um, and not everybody's ready for Bulletproof. So if that's the case, I will be honest with you and I'll let you know what other options um, might be more suitable. But uh, it all starts with applying. So just head over to the link in my bio, submit your application. I look forward to meeting you. And I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna end this here. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm gonna try to come live a lot more often. Bye.